Morning, glory, evening, grace, brethren, and sisters. Let's have all of you back along with us here with our Word Awakening for our Sunday a.m. sermon. And I look forward to getting in the Word of God this morning and uh, going over the uh, 20th Psalm. And so we thank the Lord for allowing us to come back and to gather in His name and to uh, meet again. And our prayer request here, like I mentioned, prayer for my wife. She's a little bit better, but still having some symptoms. Uh, we think uh, that we think she has a something along the lines of a stress disorder. Uh, so if you would continue to pray for her as well, that uh, she would get better. And also all those who are uh, sick in body, all of those who uh, who stand in need, and uh, whatever the uh, whatever the need is, may the Lord be with us, be with each and every individual, each individual, each uh, ministry out there, and each family, and that the Lord would be with us spiritually, financially, physically, emotionally, or whatever the need might be, as I know there are many out there that, that, that I don't know about, and so uh and so we certainly do take and I pray for all these needs and everybody. And we'll go ahead and uh, open up with a word of prayer this morning. Our oh Lord, we sure do love you. We thank you for the goodness of sin. Thank you for the opportunity to come back and to gather in your name over the cyberways. Thank you for the great message that we heard uh, this Sunday morning uh, from, uh, from our pastor. And uh, thank you, Lord, so much for that. And I pray that all of us would be faithful, that we do that work that we're supposed to do. And that uh, you be with each need out there for my wife and all those who are sick in body, all those who stand in need physically, financially, emotionally, spiritually, whatever it might be, that you'd bless them and help each one, bless each ministry, each Bible preaching church this Sunday morning, and that you would help us all, Lord God, to be faithful, to do your work and will, and just give us that which we need this morning, Lord, to preach the spirit and the truth, and in the uh, blessed name of Christ we do pray, amen and amen. And like we mentioned there uh, last Friday, with the uh, last Friday uh, service, uh, we have a new karaoke machine, a really nice karaoke machine. Thank God for answering that prayer. That's something that will also be a blessing to us, uh, be a blessing to us now, uh, like with this online ministry as well, whenever we start a church. And so we uh, praise God for that. And uh, so thank the Lord for that. And so while uh, starting this uh, this upcoming week with our uh, with our uh, end of week study, uh, my wife will do, a, uh, will do a special for that, of course. She sung this morning at our sending church, so uh, you can view that on, on Facebook as well. And so uh, <clears throat> we thank the Lord for that. And then also uh, the uh, the week of Christmas, like we said last Friday, the week of Christmas, the 21st to the 25th, uh, we will be doing a uh, doing a revival. And so we uh, the Lord just put that on a hard one, planning to do it. I really wasn't planning on doing another like another online revival or anything until we moved to Northern New York. Uh, but the Lord just put up put that on our heart. That'll probably be the last one we do. And uh, we've kind of done one every season since last spring. Uh, we did one like the last week of April, and then like the uh, the week of July, uh, in July there towards the uh, towards the middle of July, and then we did one just about a month ago for a, for a fall revival, and so the first week of October, <clears throat> and so the Lord just uh, put it on our hearts to do one again in December, and so since the Lord just uh, let, let us do that, we'll take and do it. Like we said, we're going to do a special, like for most revivals, we've done multiple specials. Uh, like we've looked at some Bible servants as well as some uh, great people of church history. <clears throat> and uh, for this one, we'll also be looking at a lesser known Bible servants. We'll be looking at three men and two ladies. And uh, two of the men are going to be Othniel, the judge, and then also Habakkuk, the minor prophet. Uh, those are the two that we have right now. We don't know who the other the other gentlemen or the two other ladies will be. But, you know, if God gives us, gives that, gives us that, then, uh, you know, we'll uh, certainly look for, you know, anybody... You know, in the Bible, that was used. It's obviously going to be a, it's going to be a, a great individual, a great person of faith, and it's great to look at those people that are lesser known that uh, we don't, uh, that people don't know as much about, uh, to just help us and encourage us that, uh, that we can be used by the Lord, and so that'll certainly be a, uh, be a great blessing, and so I uh, thank the Lord for that. Amen. And of course, also we'll be preaching tonight in sign language and voice, and then uh, back on a Tuesday, continuing in the uh, in the Old Testament survey with the Book of Joshua. And then uh, this uh, coming Friday, as we've uh, started there looking at separation from worldliness, we'll be looking at filthy communication about filthy language and how us as Christians certainly need to stay away from that. I know it's very prevalent in our time, but how we certainly need to uh, separate from it. And so come back and be with us then, as that's really going to be a help and a blessing to you. And you can go ahead now and open up, if you've got a Bible, to the 20th Psalm. That's the 20th Psalm. That's where we'll be here this morning. And so now in the 20th Psalm here, not sure if we'll get to the whole message today, these nine verses, we have uh, three points in these uh, nine verses here in this uh, great Psalm, this year, a Psalm of David. And we'll read the, uh, we'll read one to four here to get us started. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble, the name of the God of Jacob, 
defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. And looking this morning at a prayer before a battle, a prayer before a battle, may the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word and help us as we try to preach. Our Lord, we love you. We do thank you for the goodness of sin and for the reading of your word. The opportunity to stand behind the sacred desk and I preach and I pray it hides behind the cross. Just help us use us this morning, Father, uh, just to give us that which we need, Lord. You know, we stand in need of. Just do that work in us, Father, that only you can do. Just to help us, we pray, Lord, and help hearts and souls. You know, we stand in need of. Give each one each need. One who needs salvation, pray and save them. One discourage, encourage, and one backsit or claim them, Lord. Just help hearts and souls this morning. Help us be in one mind and in one accord. Pray to move every stumbling block, every demon of hell, and uh, whatever that uh, might be there, whatever off that might be in an individual's heart or in my heart, I pray to remove it so we can worship it this morning, Lord, and be in your word. For it's in Christ's blessed name we do pray. Amen. Amen. And so looking at a prayer before battle, and it's not definitive. It's not definitive of, of which battle this year is speaking of, like a couple of theologians. They have some opinions. Uh, like, uh, uh, like, like, uh, like I believe it was Adam Clark, a great theologian, said this could have been before David went to battle with the Ammonites, and it very well could have been. But we know, though, that it is a prayer before a battle, and uh, most of this here was uh, probably sung like by the choir, uh, by, a, uh, by a priesthood choir, uh, singing here for, uh, for David before he went into battle. But it is a good psalm uh, nonetheless. And it is uh, some great application here that we can make spiritually and practically to our own lives here a prayer before battle. And of course, a lot of the Psalms has to do with prayer. You know, we've already looked at that very, uh, very, very extensively here uh, throughout the Psalms. Of course, that's in the Bible prevalently as well. Uh, of course, like the Bible says there in 1 Thessalonians 5, to pray without ceasing. And so, you know, that means live the ministry of prayer. And that's why, you know, prayer is in the Word of God so much. You know, we often say, uh, you know, the great men that God used, men and women that the Lord used, you know, that their life all consisted of prayer. Of, of a lot of prayer, and so that's certainly a great need in, uh, in this day and time. You know, it always has been, you know, and it always will be. And like we said, we're to pray without ceasing. Now, you know, I love the Word of God, and I study a lot, uh, but, you know, the Bible doesn't stay to say study without ceasing, but pray without ceasing, because, you know, we are to live, you know, that ministry of prayer, always having a heart and a mind focused on the Lord. And, you know, if there's something certainly that is needed, you know, it is prayer, like the supporting churches that I have. I preached last Wednesday night at one of our supporting churches, and uh, that's what I told those people. You know, it's not just financial help, you know, in this day and time. You know, you need financial help, you know, like you have, you know, missionaries that go on deputation, you know, independent Baptists. That's how we do things. But, you know, most of all, prayer, you know, that's what's needed. You know, that's what I have on my prayer list. I just went over that. Uh, you know, this morning, you know, I want revival partners. That's what I put down. You know, in revival, you know, that has to do with prayer. You know, I want, you know, I want people that are going to pray, 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 pray. And so certainly it's very, very much needed here. And so once again, you know, we'll be on the thought of prayer. And uh, we see here, first of all, uh, number one, our first point there is, we read, we read verses one to four. And like in uh, verse number two, it says, strengthen thee out of Zion. Number one, we have prayer for strength. There is a prayer for strength, you know, we certainly need strength, you know, day in and day out, you know, with everything, you know, you know, with everything, uh, like George Mueller, you know, we've, we've looked at him before, uh, like I believe when we did that first revival, he was, he was a, one of the individuals that we looked at, you know, he was a man that prayed about every aspect of his life, and, you know, that's what we need, we need prayer for strength about every aspect of our life, you know, when it starts, you know, with our day, you know, in our home, to be the right father, to be the right mother, to be the right sibling, the right child, you know, the right spouse, whatever it might be, you know, the right employer, the right employee, uh, you know, the, uh, the the right preacher, you know, the things that we deal with day in and day out, you know, pray about every aspect of our lives, you know, about our finances, you know, certainly about our spiritual life, you know, pray about each and every bit of it, you know, what the Lord would have us to do. You know, not just when uh, when we have a need. Well, I say not just when we have a need. You know, every day we have a need. We have a need for all the things that I just said. You know, we can't be the right spouse, the right uh, the right father, the right mother without prayer. You know, we can't be the right child. Uh, you, you know, we can't be the right employee. You know, we can't be the right church member. You know, you know, we can't be the right preacher, the right deacon, the right secretary, the right usher. You know, whatever it is. You know, you know, if that's something that is uh, like like a spiritual, you know, that has to do with the church or, you know, if that's something personal, you know, that has to do with our personal life, 
you know, like that's one thing that we've really brought out there about that study that we've been doing on worldliness there. You know, how, you know, how much, you know, that affects our personal life. You know, a truly spiritual person, you know, they're going to be spiritual all the time. You know, not just whenever they go into a church house, you know, they're, they're going to have the countenance, you know, they're, they're going to have a countenance, you know, of a Christian, you know, whenever they deal with their spouse, you know, with their children, uh, you know, in their own personal life, you know, with their siblings, you know, in the home, you know, whatever it is, you know, they're going to have a godly countenance, you know, they're going to be a pleasant person. You know, so that's certainly what's needed here is prayer for strength. You know, we have a lot of, like we looked at in that study this past Friday, unfortunately, you know, we have a lot of worldly people, you know, even in independent Baptist churches simply because they're not praying. You know, they don't have a strong spiritual life. You know, they spend a minimal, they spend a minimal amount of time in the word of God and in prayer. You know, and that's why they're so weak. You know, that's why churches are so dead. You know, that's why even independent fundamental Baptist church members, you know, are just so worldly because they just do not make, they don't make much of prayer. You know, they put it at a bare minimum, but we've got to make much of it. You know, we've got to make much of prayer. We certainly do need a prayer for strength. And so that's number one in letter A here also, certainly, you know, go to the Lord in a time of trouble. You know, this was a time of battle. Like it says there, the Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. You know, whenever trouble comes, you know, that's what we must do. You know, we must go to the Lord in prayer, you know, not to, not not trust our own, not not trust our own human nature, our own instincts or anything else. But we must go to the good Lord in prayer, you know, like that old hymn says, you know, oh, what burdens, you, you know, that we do carry all because we don't take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, if we took it to the Lord in prayer, then we wouldn't have to carry so many burdens. We wouldn't have so many issues, so many problems. But whenever things do come up, though, immediately take it to the Lord in prayer. Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. I sought the Lord. See, we've got to seek the Lord's face about this stuff. You know, that's where the issue lies. You know, we don't go to the Lord about it. We're not biblical about it. We're not holy about it. You know, we're worldly about things. We don't go to the Lord in prayer about it. You know, that is the mark of a truly spiritual person. You know, whenever issues arise, you know, like I said, you know, we'll just make it personal whenever we're in the home. You know, when there's an issue between, a, you know, between a between a husband and a wife or, you know, between them and their children, between siblings, whatever it might be. You know, do we consult God about it? You know, are we, you know, are we biblical about it? You know, are we just worldly about it? You know, like us as, uh, you know, King James only independent Baptist. You know, I've kind of, you know, I've said that before. Like I've said that before, you know, like like a, like with a lot of people, you know, I'm a King James only independent Baptist, and that's wonderful. But you know, are we biblical in the home? You know, is that what our daily life, you know, consists of? Because you know, like we did a study about that, you know, using a King James Bible but living in NIV life. You know, there's so many, you know, issues that arise, you know, among our own personal, you know, immediate families, relatives, you know, in the workplace. You know, we use a King James Bible. That's wonderful. You know, do we live a King James Bible? You know, you know, is that what our, uh, is that what our uh, life uh, represents? You know, like that, I believe it was Jack Van Impey. You know, like, like I know he started off as a, as a good, you know, Bible-believing fundamentalist, but he went in a newly evangelical direction, you know, later on in his life. But I believe it was him. You know, they called him a walking Bible, you know, because he could quote so much scripture. You know, that's what our lives, you know, should be. You know, we, we should we should really, you know, be that, you know, our lives, you know, that that should be a representation, you know, of the King James Bible. And, you know, it will be, you know, if, if we apply it, if we go to the Lord in prayer, you know, whenever these issues arise, whatever it could be, you know, that that could be something, you know, like I said, that's more personal, you know, that's in your immediate family, that's in the home, you know, that has to do with relatives, maybe that has to do with the workplace or or, you know, it could be a need, you know, you could have a, you know, a car that just broke down and you, you know, a car that just broke down and you need a help fixing that car. You need financial help with it. You know, it could be something happened to the house. Uh, you, you know, you, you know, it could be something more external such as that, you know, that you need help with, you know, it could be, you know, bad news from your physician or somebody in your immediate family that has a cancer, some type of disease, something of some nature, but whatever it is, you know, we go to the Lord about it. 2 Samuel 22, verses 2 and 3. And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. 
my high tower and my refuge, my savior, thou savest me from violence. You know, see also here, you know, the Lord, he's all those things. You know, he's our rock. He's our fortress. You know, he's the one that we can hide behind. You know, he is our shield. You know, he is our protector. He's the one that will deliver us, you know, from trouble that will save us from violence. You know, when we have to rely on him, you know, rely on him in prayer. You know, rely on him, you know, with our actions. You know, that's what will happen when an individual prays. You know, when an individual prays, you know, that fear, you know, you know, it'll dissipate. You know, you know, you could be heartbroken. You know, you, you could be heartbroken. I experienced, I experienced that, you know, a few months ago. You know, you could have somebody who was a good friend to you, you know, who just up and left you, you know, for, for, for whatever reason. You know, you could be heartbroken over some type of situation such as lost a, you know, a good friend, a prayer partner. Or, you know, that, 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 could have been a, that could have been a close relative, you know, a relative that you'd gotten close to that was a blessing to you. But, you know, for whatever reason, they turned another way. No, well, take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, ask God to replace that person. You know, to give you another, you know, good, strong prayer partner, you know, a faithful friend, whatever it might be. Because whenever we pray, you know, that fear, you know, that will dissipate. See, we go to the Lord in a time of trouble. And there in verse number two, it says, Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Now, this sanctuary here, that's talking about the Lord's sanctuary, where his throne is, you know, where he abides. So the Lord, you know, is in a perfect sanctuary. You know, you know, there's nothing at all, you know, you know, there's nothing that we could find at all wrong with his sanctuary. You know, it is a completely pure place, a place just full of holiness and full of power. And we know that there is help in the sanctuary. You know, there's help in God's sanctuary. Then, you know, that's what we also have in churches. You know, we have sanctuaries here, you know, in our churches, you know, the sanctuary, you know, that's a place that is sanctified, you know, a place that is to be holy, you know, that, that like sanctified, that means set apart. You know, a sanctuary is supposed to be a holy place, you know, that's set apart for preaching. You know, and there certainly is, you know, that there is help in the house of God. You know, that's, you know, that, that's, that's one of the two things that the Lord established. You know, he established a home, you know, and he established the church. You know, and that, you know, that's what our ministry is. You know, that's obviously what we're doing. You know, we're planting churches because, you know, that's what the need is. You know, that's what communities need. That's what people need. Because there is help in the sanctuary. And if you want help, you know, be faithful to the house of God. You know, be faithful to the house of God with your attendance. And be faithful to the house of God whenever you're there with your heart. You know, listen to the preaching. You know, be open. You know, be open to the word of God. You know, that's where the help is. You know, God uses the foolishness of preaching. You know, I listen to preaching, honestly, just about every single day. I, like, uh, like I said, you know, I've already, uh, I went to church this morning and heard a message and then also heard another one, uh, you know, over the, over the internet. You know, I listen to one or two sermons a day. Like it says in uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. See, you know, the word of God, that's the thing that he inspired and is profitable for doctrine. See, doctrine is important to the Lord. You know, we've got to have the right doctrine. You know, those are usually two things that coincide. You know, you take a person that has the right doctrine, then, you know, they'll have the right lifestyle. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, because all of us can grow. None of us are sinlessly perfect, and we need to be reproved. You know, and a truly spiritual person, you know, will accept that. You know, it don't bother me at all. You know, whenever I hear preaching and it reproves me because I want to get closer and closer to God. If there's something in my life that's not supposed to be, then I want to be reproved about it. You know, for reproof, for correction. You know, we need to be corrected, you know, to live a holy life, you know, to be more holy. You know, we should always, always, you know, be growing in the Lord. You know, you know, and that's also that that's one thing that the Lord brought to my attention. That's rather heartbreaking to me, I think. Now, that's one reason why the Lord's having me do this series about worldliness now. You know, this is a, this is something that I noticed kind of early, maybe kind of more so earlier this year in 2020, you know, on a, on a personal spiritual level. But, you know, as Christians, we are supposed to always be growing, are we not? You know, like, like if you've been in church, you've probably heard it. You know, there, there really is no neutral with God. You're either going forward or you're going backward. And that doesn't necessarily mean that there's always going to be fruit that's manifested. 
uh, you know, when your life fruit is in, you know, people being saved and, uh, you know, that your church or your ministry is growing, you know, we have those times of trials, you know, just like Job, you know, he was a perfect and an upright man, yet he lost everything he had except his wife. You know, we go through trials and temptations, but, you know, on a, uh, on a spiritual level, though, you know, always going forward, you know, just like Job, you know, he lost everything externally. But, you know, in his spiritual life, what happened then, you know, when his so-called friends came accusing him? You know, he was going forward with God. And then, you know, that trial ended, you know, and he came out on the other side with twice as, twice as much as he had before. You know, as believers, you know, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to always be spiritually progressing, you know, being more mature. You know, that resembles our spiritual life. You know, like my daughter now, you know, she's five years old. You know, she can talk, she can walk, you know, she can feed herself, you know, she, she's even starting to learn how to read. You know, when my daughter was an infant, she couldn't do anything but lay and drool. You know, that, that's, that, that's all that she could do, you know, when she was an infant. But, you know, you expect a five-year-old to be able to do more than drool. And, you know, that's just like us, you know, in our spiritual lives. You know, we're always supposed to be growing, uh, you know, going forward, you know, with more power than we previously had. You know, like I told my, and I, and I, my wife in our personal devotions about a week ago, I said, you know, when I was, uh, like when I was uh, 29, 29, almost 30 years old, almost 30 years old, you know, when I first went to Canada, I was a fired up, you know, I was a fired up person, a fired up preacher. You know, I was, uh, you know, I had a good relationship with God. I had some good accomplishments. You know, I'd started writing, you know, books and things, you know, taught at a Bible Institute, etc. You know, back when I was 30 years old, you know, I had a good resume, so to speak. You know, and I can honestly say, you know, that I loved God and I loved God's word. But now, you know, as a 34 year old man going to northern New York, I can honestly say now I'm closer to God than I was back then. You know, I'm, I'm definitely closer to God, you know, and I'm more mature. That's a major thing. You know, I, I'm more mature in more ways than one. I'm a better husband, a better father than I was back then. And you know what, friend? I love God more. I'm spending more time with God now. I spent a good bit of time with God back then. I did a lot of studying and stuff back then, but I do it even more now. You know, I'm closer to God now than I was then. You know, I study more. I love God more. I love God's word more. You know, we're people who always need to be correcting ourselves, you know, and going forward. But, you know, honestly, there, there's there, there's not a whole lot of people I know personally that are doing that, you know, just shooting it straight with you. You know, I, I really see the opposite. You know, I see people getting more and more worldly. You know, I see Christians, you know, even in independent Baptist churches, you know, they're, they're really doing less, it seems like. I think they're reading the Bible less. I think they're praying less because, you know, that's what their life shows. You know, I see believers, you know, just getting more and more worldly. You know, they, they, they've not grown. They've gone the other way. You know, it's as though, you know, they've just got further and further away from God. And, you know, that's what we need the house of God for. You know, that's what preaching, you know, that's what preaching should do, you know, to feed the flock, to help people, you know, have reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness. You know, that's where it's at, you know, to live a more righteous life. You know, to have God's instructions, you know, and be closer, you know, and closer to God. You know, and that's, that's what's also, you know, in the pastoral epistles. You know, that's what Paul told them. He said, you know, you elderly men, elderly believers, you know, there to be, you know, there to be examples to younger people. You know, elderly ladies, you know, they're supposed to be an example, you know, to younger ladies because, you know, they're older, they're more mature. You know, they have more experience with God. They faced more. You know, but unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of people, you know, that really, really, you know, fulfill those roles. And that certainly is a great need in this day and time. And, you know, we need to, you know, we need to halt this downward trend. And, you know, we have that because people are just too worldly. You know, that that's just the issue right there. You know, people are just flat out, you know, that they are just too worldly, you know, to be spiritual and obey the Lord God and his word. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter number 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses, uh, yes, that's right, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13, I 
have sloppy handwriting. I apologize. And this message right here is written very small. 1 Corinthians 2, 12 and 13, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. See, that's what we were just saying. You know, we don't have the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. You know, we're to have the Holy Spirit as believers that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. You know, that there's no reason not. You know, that there's no reason not to progress with the Lord. You know, we go, like I said, we go to church. You know, when we listen to, you know, we listen to preaching. And, you know, like I said, you know, with our conveniences, you know, that we have now, you know, that there's no reason why nobody can't study the Bible. You know, you can just get on the Internet, get on a smartphone, a computer. Uh, you know, you have access to several free commentaries and Bible dictionaries, you know, everything. You know, like it says, they're freely given. You know, this is freely given. You know, you don't have to pay any type of money to get close to God. That's something, you know, that money can't buy. But it's freely given. You know, we just got to put the time in it to get time in prayer. You know, talking about prayer, you know, it doesn't cost anything to pray. Now, prayer is definitely work. You know, the devil's going to fight an individual that wants to pray, but it's freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. See, that's what we get out of God's sanctuary. You know, that's what we get out of preaching. That's what we get out of our walk with God and with praying. You know, what we have is a human wisdom. It doesn't come from the world. It comes from God. You know, there is help in the sanctuary. You know, we have people that just aren't getting help because they are just flat out too worldly. They are just, you know, too much of the flesh. You know, their flesh, you know, just has all the preeminence in their life. Because they just they just don't get the spiritual aspect of things. No time in prayer, no time in the Word of God. You know, they're just uh, they're, they're not faithful to preaching and to listen to preaching and get help from God's Word. Colossians chapter one verses twenty eight and twenty nine. Whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. See, that's what that word perfect means. You know, that means mature. You know, that, that's just such a need right now. You know, we need more mature believers. You know, like we did that last revival talking about the fruit of the Spirit. You know, I just see so, so few believers, you know, that really manifest, you know, that in our life. It's really the direct opposite, like like we mentioned last Friday. You know, we have, you know, we have, you know, believers, people who are members of independent fundamental so-called Bible-believing churches. You know, they have no fruit of that spirit. They're just mad all the time. You know, they have the other things. They have anger, wrath, and, you know, just fleshly lust, you know, filthy communication. You know, we just have so, so few, you know, people who are really mature in the Lord Jesus Christ. But, you know, that's what preaching is supposed to bring. Whereunto I also labor, striving according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. I want to be like the Apostle Paul there and have God work in me mightily. That's something I have already resolved. Like whenever the Lord called us back to northern New York, what I told my wife, I know I'm not a perfect man. I'm a man with a limited ability, but I'm just going to do everything I have that I can to have the most biblical church possible. You know, and having the most biblical church possible, I'm going to have that have the most biblical home possible. You know, I'm going to live holy. I'm going to live righteous. I'm going to do what the Word of God says. I really want God to use me. I'm not going to settle for mediocrity. You know, and we certainly need more believers who will take that type of mindset and say, I'm not just going to settle for, you know, average, mediocre. I'm going to be as biblical as I can about things. I'm going to give God everything that I have. I'm going to give God my whole heart. You know, everything, doing my absolute very best. So we see letter B, there's help in the sanctuary. And of verse number three, remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice, Selah. Letter C, we must offer God our lives. We must offer God our lives. See, before battle, that was before battle. That's why it says remember. See, it was just customary. Before like a king and people went into battle, you know, they presented offerings, you know, and burnt sacrifices. And see, that's what we need to do right now with our lives. You know, before, you know, do that before you go throughout your day. Before you go throughout your day, you know, have your devotions, your time in prayer, your time in God's word. Have that time in word and in prayer. You know, like it says there, you know, burnt sacrifice. You know, the New Testament equivalent to that. You know, familiar text from Romans 12, 1.
Romans 12, 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, like a lot of people, whenever you use the language that I just said, saying that I want to be biblical to the T, I want to give God everything I have, they'll say, well, you're just a holier than thou. And I know that's a degrading term, but look there, we're supposed to be holy. You know, we're so that's what holy means. That means rise above. You know, we are supposed to be holier than this world. You know, like we went over last Friday. You know, an individual that's just, you know, that has anger, malice, wrath, lasciviousness, that's the character traits of a lost person. You know, as believers, we live to a much higher standard. We're to bear the fruit of the Spirit. You know, and you get that way by presenting yourself a living sacrifice to God, saying, Lord, here am I. You know, do with me what you want to. A living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. See, that's what the Lord requires. He requires holiness. If you want to be acceptable unto God, you've got to present yourself a living sacrifice and holy to God. And that's just your reasonable service. You know, that's not an option. You know, with the, the language the Apostle Paul is using there, your reasonable service, that's nothing out of the ordinary. That's what every believer is supposed to do. You know, that's not just for preachers. That's not just for people on church staff. You know, that, that's not just an individual that has a Bible college degree. You know, that's what all of us are supposed to do. We're supposed to be holy. That is what is acceptable to God. We are to live holy, righteous lives. That's what the Lord requires out of each individual, out of each believer. And also stay in there in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 13. 6, 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. See, don't yield to the world. Now, the only way you're going to have victory over that is through prayer. Because the devil's out there, you know, that is our adversary. Like this is a prayer for battle, friend. We've got an adversary in the devil. We've got a problem in our flesh this morning. And we cannot yield ourselves as members of unright as uh, as members, as instruments of unrighteousness. The only way to combat that is with the prayer and the word of God. Instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We're not dead. We're not lost people. We're not to manifest, you know, the works of lost people, but what God has. And verse number four here, grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. Now they're singing to God. They're saying, Lord, do what's according to your own heart and fulfill all of your counsel that you want with us in this battle. See, letter D, may the Lord's will be done. See, may the Lord's will be done. See, that's what's going to happen. You know, whenever a person, you know, presents their self, a living, says a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, you know, they're saying, Lord, you know, it's like Isaiah, Lord, here am I, send me, do with me what you want to. You know, whatever career you want me to take, whatever ministry you want me to be a part of. See, that's actually our next, our next verse under here, you know, right after that verse one of Romans 12, looking at verse number two. See, this is the next verse. You know, that's that's you know that's the exposition of it. Next here, and be not conformed to this world. Because see, that's the adversary. You know that that's what the battle is. You know, you're you're either going to be godly or you're going to be worldly. You know, the devil hates you this morning. The devil wants you to be worldly. The devil wants you to be a discouragement to people. The devil wants your testimony. The devil wants to ruin you. Well, see, what's the opposite, you know, of presenting yourself a living sacrifice and being holy to be conformed to this world? And that's why he says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the only way you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind is by prayer. You know, like we've said, you know, that's why the Bible makes so much of it, so much of prayer. You know, that's the building blocks of the Christian life. You know, you've got to pray. You've got to be in the Word of God. You know, you show me somebody that has a strong prayer life, a strong Bible reading life, that's going to be a strong Christian. You know, that's going to be a Christian that is prosperous in their spiritual life. Somebody that's weak, you know, they're going to be a weak person. You know, it probably kind of sounds like a broken record, but you know what our hearts are, what we're going, you know, through now on Friday nights. 
You know, why is it that we have so many worldly Christians? Because they don't have the knowledge of God. There are people that don't know the word of God. They know no more about worldliness than they do God. They know more about the ball games, more about what's on television, the sitcoms, reality TV, hunting, fishing. You know, the, 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 the sales down at the stores and everything. They know more about all that than they knew God. There's not a lot of transforming their mind. Because there's no time in prayer. There's no time in the word of God. See, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, there we see that word again, you know, perfect. You know, it takes, or, you know, it takes a mature Christian, you know, somebody with a consistent walk with God to live out the will of God. You know, that's why it's so heartbreaking, like we said last Friday night. You know, I say that fairly often. You know, it's just so sad, you know, the believers out there, you know, that do not fulfill the will of God for their lives. You know, they don't fill the will of God for their lives because they just never get close enough to God to do it. You know, that they just never have a strong enough prayer life. You know, they don't consult God with what they want to do. You know, they're just, not in the, they're just not in the word of God enough. You know, we just have so many people who are just flat out, you know, out of God's will. You know, flat out, just out of God's will. But, you know, we've got to do the opposite. We've got to renew our mind. We've got to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, and that's only going to come, you know, by an individual, you know, that is a mature Christian with a strong walk with God. And also Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. Ephesians 5, 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. You know, don't be unwise. Don't be foolish. See, the word of God says it there. Like I use that term, biblically illiterate. You know, that's just what far, far too many people are. You know, they are just outright biblically illiterate. You know, they don't know the word of God and they're unwise. But we're not to be unwise. You know, we're not to be ignorant and foolish. But understanding, you know, that's a godly understanding. That's a spiritual understanding. You know, that's more than just human intellect. That's spiritual intellect. You know, understanding what the will of the Lord is for your life. Because that's, you know, we're going to look at, uh, <clears throat> you know, might uh, look at that a little bit more here in a little bit. Because, you know, oftentimes, you know, if you have, you have an issue, you're praying about something, you know, often, you know, the answer, you know, isn't what we think it ought to be. You know, often God's will, you know, that, that goes against human reasoning, that goes against what other people want us to do. But, you know, that is spiritual understanding, that is spiritual intellect. Now here, continuing on, our last two points will be, uh, especially our third point, but, uh, but our last two points here will be a bit quicker than the first one. So we'll get through all of this message here. It'll probably just take us, I'd say, 15 to 20 more minutes at the most. Continuing on here, verses 5 and 6. We will rejoice in thy salvation in the name of our God. We will set up our banners, the Lord, fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Number two here, peace about the situation. See, that's what happens when an individual prays. That's what happens, you know, when an individual is walking in God's will. You know, that, that's what we were just saying there. You know, the outside, you know, externally, it might not look good. You know, like, uh, like I don't want to, you know, beat that, uh, beat that illustration to death. But, you know, that's on my heart because, you know, that just happened to me relatively recently. You know, like, well, like I said, you know, when I went back into, you know, full-time ministry, you know, externally, things didn't, you know, look all that well for me and my family, you know, financially and in, and in other aspects. But, you know, that was God's will. And, you know, by us, you know, just stepping out on faith there, you know, living a little tight there for a while, God blessed us greatly. You know, God gave us, you know, the heart of revival. You know, you know, God gave us that heart that I explained. You know, I said, hey, you know, I'm going to have the most biblical church I possibly can. I'm going to follow the Bible to a T. I'm going to give it everything I have. Now, I'm going to be a prayer warrior. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be one that uh, studies the Bible day in and day out. You know, I'm going to be a fasting warrior. 
you know, looking at uh, like looking at the, uh, you know, the testimonies and the lives of, you know, the great men of those previous great awakenings like there in upstate New York, like Charles Finney, Abel Clary, Daniel Nash, you know, just a prayer warrior. Somebody, you know, that's just completely, you know, sold out to God completely, you know, 100 percent serving God with a whole heart. Because, see, you will have peace about your situation whenever you give God all your heart, whenever you're praying about it, when you're saying, I'm going to walk in God's will no matter what. I'm going to be biblical about the situation no matter what. See, we can have peace about it. Like it says there, verse 5, we will rejoice in thy salvation. And then, uh, and then in the name of our God, letter A, we can rejoice that God will take care of us. God always has and he always will. Exodus chapter 15 and verse 11. Exodus 15, 11. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You know, who is like unto God? Nobody. You know, nobody's like God. Nobody can compare to God. Nobody else can. You know, this is actually the banner that they're talking about there. It says, we're going to set up banners. The Lord fulfill, fulfill all thy petitions. You know, they're saying whenever we go into this battle, whenever, whenever we win, you know, we're going to set up, we're going to set up these banners here, you know, praising the good Lord because nobody can compare to him. You know, the gods of the Ammonites, the Moanites, the, you know, the Assyrians, the Babylonians, all the, all the heathen nations there, you know, you know, their, their God is no match for our God. No, same with us. You know, there, there's no situation on this earth that God cannot, cannot resolve. You know, as we've already went over, you know, we have to be biblical about those situations. But, you know, if we are biblical about it. God can take care of all of it. Psalm 138, 8. The Lord will perfect. See, there we see that terminology again. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. You know, God's not going to forsake us. You know, if we follow God and do what the Lord would have us to do, the Lord's going to perfect us. The Lord's going to mature us. The Lord's going to get us where we need to be. The Lord's going to use us and uh, the Lord's going to use us and take care of us. The Lord is going to perfect that which concerneth us. You know, the Lord's going to work in that situation. Yes, you know, like I just said there, I've had really... You know, really hard, difficult times. You know, I've had some times there, you know, when I was crying my eyes out, when it all looked hopeless for me. You know, the only thing that I could do was just go to God. But, you know, that's exactly what I did. You know, I went to the Lord in prayer. I went to the Lord in fasting. You know, I gave it, I gave it all to the Lord. I said, Lord, you know, your will be done. You know, I'm going to be biblical about all of it and do the absolute best that I possibly can. Now, Philippians 1, 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So we can be confident of that. The Lord's not going to forsake us. God has began that good work in us. You know, we're, you know, we're walking with God. We're abiding in God. Like it says there in John 15, you know, we're doing that vital union, you know, producing that fruit that we're supposed to produce. God certainly isn't going to forsake us. You know, he's going to use that time of purging, like it mentions in John 15 too. You know, we have that time of purging so we can bring forth more fruit. God's begun that good work in us and he will carry it out, you know, until our time is ended. If that's whenever we, you know, pass away physically on this earth or whenever the rapture takes place, God's going to take care of us. And then a letter B here, verse number six, it says, Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear him. From his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Let her be God's saving strength assures us victory. You know, we can be assured that we're going to have that victory by the Lord's saving strength. Familiar text here from our first John chapter 5. First John chapter 5 and verse number 4. For whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So you want to have that victory over that situation, over whatever it is, you know, your need could be that you're struggling in sin. You know, go to God about it. That is the victory that overcomes the world. If you're struggling with sin, if you're struggling with worldliness, if you're struggling with an addiction, whatsoever is born of God, overcometh the world. 
you know, and that is, you know, our spiritual life, a strong spiritual life. You know, and we can be confident that through God and abiding in him, that we will overcome the world. And our last point here, and we'll be through verses seven and nine. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Number three, the power of God stated. They're saying here, we know the power of God. See, chariots and horses, you know, those were, the, that was the greatest, you know, military weapons of that time. You know, people that had chariots and had strong horses. They're saying, you know, their people, like these other pagan nations, they all trust in their chariots and in their horses in battle. But we trust in God because there is no power that's like God. They are brought down and fallen. You know, chariots and horses, they're going to be brought down and they're going to fall. But we are risen and stand upright because they trust in God and in him alone. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29, 11. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For all that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. See, the Lord has all the power. He's got all the glory, all the victory, all the majesty. See, all of it is the Lord's kingdom, all of the earth. Seeing God is exalted as head above all the earth. That's the great power that he has. Romans 15, 13. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. Say, that's what somebody that has a strong walk with God's going to have. Somebody that's trusting God. They're going to have all the joy. They're going to have all the peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. See, a person with a consistent walk with God, they're going to have the power of God. And they can rest assured that God is going to take care of them and that his will is going to be taken. His will is going to be carried out in them. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. Such a wonderful message there. Certainly enjoyed going through this uh, psalm. Of course, we know all the word of God is great. Nothing compares to the to the majesty and the glory of God's word. Of course, you know, I love, love the word of God because that's where our help is. And looking there at also prayer. All those two vital, vital building blocks. Prayer and the reading of God's word. Now, they are so much needed because, you know, we have a battle on our hand. You know, you may not have a personal need. You know, you might have a good looking bank account, a good looking house, a good looking car. But if you walk with God, we are in a spiritual battle. You know, and us sold out believers who love God, who love holiness. You know, we are a rarity. We are a rarity here. You know, us people who really desire strong churches. But that certainly is what's needed. Amen. And also speaking of that, I meant to mention this whenever we first started. The Lord slated it on our heart. Uh, like we uh, we did away like with uh, with one of our studies like we were doing like kind of like two midweek studies. There were currently two Bible Institute classes. We're still doing OT survey, but we uh, canceled the other until further notice. But we're actually going to, I guess we can say, fill that with something else. This is going to be short. It's not going to be very extensive. But we're actually, like we've actually mentioned that with uh, lately with scripture memorization. And the Lord has just led us also on uh, at the beginning of the week. So this is either going to become maybe like on a Sunday night after we uh, finish the uh, Sunday night sermon or on Monday morning. We are going to, uh, we're going to have a time where we go over memory verse. This, like I said, this isn't going to be very long. Uh, this is something that probably won't go any more than uh, 30, than uh, 10 minutes or so. But uh, we're just going to go over a verse. And uh, whenever we get started, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to mention it to people. Like as to how you can get, uh, you can get this paper here. Like you can get this free paper. Uh, you can print it off. You can print it off from David Cloud. 
from uh, from David Cloud's website. This was something that uh, that he did there about Bible study in a free ebook. So you can print these off there. Great. So we're just going to look at the memory verse and kind of what the meaning of the memory verse is. Like I'm going to go over all the things in here. Like if you'd like, you know, you, you can use this for your memory verse or something else. But the Lord just uh, led us to do this here. Of course, the Word of God is always a great help and a blessing to people. But it just uh, kind of shows us the main meaning of the verse, and then like uh, and then other verses that will help us understand this verse, like in the Treasure of Scripture knowledge. You know, like what this verse teaches about God. You know, sin that this verse that uh, this verse reproves, etc. And so uh, we're going to start that. Uh, this uh, this coming Monday, and so uh, we look forward to uh, that as well. Hopefully, that'll be a help and a uh, and a blessing to people as well. So like that, that's one thing that's also needed. You know, one thing that'll work. You know, scripture memorization. You know, like we said there with the last Friday. You know, in combating worldliness. You know, that's something that we need to use. You know, rather than meditating. You know, on worldly things like sports or you know that. Uh, you know, that TV show that we love or, you know, on catching the biggest fish or, you know, whatever the world has, you know, we need to replace that with meditating on the word of God. So we look forward to that as well. Uh, so come and be with us. Thank you all this uh, morning for your kind attention and for your love and support towards us and prayers for me and my family. Continue to pray for us in our ministry as we plan to move to northern New York here this spring, as we certainly praying for everybody out there. And we'll close in prayer. Our Father, we sure do love you. Thank you so much for the goodness of sin. Thank you so much for your word and what it means to us. Just help us all to be faithful. Uh, help us to walk with you in that way that would be pleasing unto you, Lord. Just to help us do that uh, mighty work in us, mighty work through us. Just like Paul there said, Lord, he wants He wants you to work in him mightily. And so do we. Just help us, Lord God, to, to be faithful, to just uh, to keep the word of God in our heart and in our mind and to pray without ceasing, to be that right prayer warrior and to uh, live for you, Lord God, in desire. I know revival comes to those who are desire it. And I pray we do just that, that we would desire revival, that we would desire for you to work in us greatly and just help us all to have the right character, to be the right individual that we ought to be and to be used to thee, Lord God, and just help us and use us and continue to lead God and direct us, Lord, we pray. For it's in Christ's blessing and we do pray. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much for being with us and we'll see you tonight until the day's break and the, the day break and the shadows flee away. I am Brother Cooper and I love you.